Here we go, inverse trig functions. So here are some big long worded definitions of the derivative of an inverse. Um, I really like the Larson one at the bottom. The derivative of an inverse is one over the derivative of the original function, but then you shove the inverse into the original function. So it's kind of like a reciprocal type thing. I think that's kind of where that negative one exponent comes from in that inverse notation, because inverse notation doesn't really imply that uh, negative one. Isn't that right, Mel? That's right. That's right. Um, the major thing, we're not, we don't care about that. We don't care about any of this. What we care about for today is this. Oh, I, lost, I dropped Mel's toy. Um, <laughs> the inverse trig functions are all of these things. Now note that a lot of these are very, very similar to each other. Sine and cosine are basically the same thing. It's just that cosine has got a negative in its numerator. Tangent and cotangent are also basically the same thing. Uh, just uh, cotangent's got a negative in the numerator. Same thing with secant and cosecant. One of them's just got a negative in the numerator. Um, so you know, I these are also ranked in likelihood of being on AP exams. The top one is most likely to see, then second most, and then least likely is the inverse for secant and cosecant. Um, no, Mal, don't stand on the keyboard. She knows she can't go on the keyboard, so she always just puts one ball on the caps lock. <laughs> All right, um, I've got those those functions written over here on the side. We want to find the derivative with respect to y to uh, derivative of y with respect to the appropriate variable, derivative of y with respect to x. Bye, Mel. So we wanted to find the derivative of co cosine inverse. Uh, composed with an x squared. Now we could do all of the, like we could find the derivative of cosine and shove the uh, cosine inverse. No, we're not doing any of that. We're just gonna do this thingy that's here, this thingy. So we just gotta do this thing. So our inside part u is x squared. So u prime is gonna be two x. So this derivative, y prime, is just going to be all of this stuff that's in there. So that is, let's see, negative u prime, so negative 2x over the square root of 1 minus my u value squared. So u is just x squared. So we square an x squared, and we get x to the fourth. And that's it. That's it. We done. We did it. We found the derivative. It's that easy peasy. It's so easy peasy, I'm going to do two more. Um, so our inside part, again, is u. So that is the square root of 2t. <laughs> 2t. So u prime is just going to be the square root of 2. Oh, there's no more. Um, so we need to put that into our inverse sine thingy. And we do want to memorize these, um, uh, but we don't need to memorize them right or right away, but we'll get them. We'll get them. So u prime in the numerator, that's our square root of two over the square root of one minus, I'm going to wrap this up this time, square root of two t squared. Now, these are so easy, we can do a little simplification, right? So we get the square root of 2 over the square root of 1 minus 2t squared. Now, we could also, like, make it y prime equals just a big square root, especially for this one. like this, but I think that's about all the simplification that we really want to do for this problem. Okay, last one, find the derivative. Uh, we've got cotangent. Um, let's do our inside bit. Inside bit is u equals the square root of t. Ooh, we actually might be able to do something interesting. u prime is going to be the derivative of that, so that's gonna be 1 half uh, t to the negative 1 half. So that's 1 over 2 square roots of t. 
pretty sure. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so cotangent is this one down there. Um, so y prime is going to equal negative the uh, u prime. Um, and we just found that. That's the green thing. So here, I'll even write it in green. 1 over 2 squared to t over 1 plus um, whatever our u value is, which is whatever our u value is squared. And our u value for this one is the square root of t. All right. Let's just do a little bit of cleanup. So we get 1 negative 1 over 2 square roots of t over 1 plus t. Um, and then we can multiply both of those by 2 squared to t so we don't have a fraction and a fraction. So this multiplied by 2 square roots of t becomes just a negative 1 over the denominator being multiplied by 2 square roots of t is just all that. Uh, 2 square roots of t times 1 plus t. And that's our y prime. That's it. I mean, they, they sure do look gross, but I mean, that's it. That We're just applying the chain rule inside of these inverse trig functions. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's all about all I got for you here on these inverse trig functions. Just uh, the big thing I think of this is making sure that you know all of these. You do eventually want to know all of these off the top of your head. Okay, but that will come with time. All right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.